This video is brought to you by Honey. Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds the best coupons on the web so you always get the best prices on everything you buy online. Today we will again be entering the realm of the macabre. We've already featured some despicable men in our other shows on killers, but perhaps today's focus beats the other serial killers hands down in view of his sheer murderousness. What's perhaps more surprising is that today's serial killer was an educated fella, and in appearance could have been the quiet boy next door or the guy who sat opposite you in the office. This is one of the reasons he was able to gain the trust of the people that he brutally killed. He plagued the streets of the USA in the 1970s, and it's thought he committed even more crimes than he admitted to. So, without further ado, welcome to this episode of the Infographic Show, America's most evil serial killer, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was born on November 24th, 1946. His life ended in Florida's electric chair on January 24th, 1989. His last words were, Jim and Fred, I'd like you to give my love to my family and friends. He didn't ask for any kind of special final meal, so he was given the standard meal for Florida's death row, which was steak, eggs, hash browns, toast with butter, jelly, milk, coffee, and juice. According to reports, he didn't touch any of it. Bundy denied killing women at first, and fought the charges for around a decade. He even married a girl while he was on trial, but she gave up on him when the truth came out. Ted had a strange start in life, as his young mother was ashamed she had him out of wedlock, and so young Ted grew up believing a lie he had been told, that he was actually the adopted son of his grandparents and that his mother was his sister. He discovered the truth later in life. He would never know his father. Stories differ as to what his household was like, but it seems his grandfather had violent rages and that his grandmother was often an unhappy victim of those rages. While Ted was handsome and apparently easy to talk to, he would later admit that he found making friends difficult. I didn't know what made people want to be friends, he once said. I didn't know what underlay social interactions. He did normal things any young man might do, such as go to church and date women. He had girlfriends, but upon any kind of rejection, he would seek vengeance. He went to university, but it seems he was often distracted or not interested in the subject matter. It seems psychology was his thing, and he graduated with honors from the University of Washington in 1972. He even worked on the phones at a suicide prevention hotline center, and again, he seemed to his colleagues like a normal sort of guy. Soon after this, he enrolled in law school and became the assistant director on the Seattle Crime Prevention Advisory Commission. One of the most unsettling things he did while working in this position was write a pamphlet offering women advice on how to prevent being raped. Bundy, of course, would become a serial rapist. In fact, he probably already had raped by then. So why do people use the superlative most evil? Well, firstly, it's thought that Bundy killed many more people than he admitted to killing. He admitted to murdering at least 30 women, but some people believe he may have killed as many as 100 women. Bundy told different people different stories, but police investigating him believe that the killing may have started when he was just a teenager. This is just speculation though. It's widely believed that he kidnapped and killed an 8-year-old when he was just 14, but there is no significant proof and Bundy always denied that. We can say the real proof of his villainy started in 1974, when Bundy was just 27 years old. We can't go into details about every murder, because there are too many and we feel that some of the crimes are just too gruesome to describe to you. We will say that he chose young women, usually students. He would often attack them with an object while they were sleeping, bludgeoning them to death or close to death. After this, he would sexually assault them. On other occasions, it's thought he would gain women's trust just because he knew how to talk, and sometimes he would wear his arm in a sling to give the women the feeling he was injured and so perhaps not very dangerous. Bundy would often decapitate his victims, and sometimes keep the heads as a kind of trophy. Many of his victims' bodies were never found. But one of the worst things is that Bundy was actually on the radar of the police for some time, but they just needed more evidence to arrest him for murder. It's likely they had no idea as to the extent of his viciousness. In 1976, he was charged with kidnapping and assault, and a year later, he was charged with murder. In prison, it seems escape was always on his mind, and at one point while serving time in Utah State Prison, he was found hiding outside the prison yard with a bag containing what was called an escape kit. Bundy was in some ways very smart, and he outfoxed authorities on many occasions. 
1977, he was sent to Pitkin County Courthouse, whereupon he asked to go to the library. He had chosen to defend himself, given his law experience, and so did not have to wear shackles and handcuffs. He said he wanted to visit the library to do some research. Whoever gave him permission to do so must have regretted it for the rest of his or her life, because Bundy jumped out of a window and ran. He headed towards Aspen Mountain and found an old abandoned cabin in the woods. Six days later, he was recaptured, was tired, hungry, and in pain due to a sprained ankle that resulted from his window jump. Believe it or not, Bundy would escape again, but he would get much farther, relying on stolen cars and stolen food. After his next escape, he headed to Florida, and once settled, he went over to Florida State University's Chai Omega sorority house. There, he walked into dorms where female students were sleeping, he attacked four women in the space of 15 minutes, some sources say more like an hour, bludgeoning them and assaulting them in other ways. He killed two of them and left the other two with serious physical injuries and psychological scars that would last a lifetime. The community was in shock, and notices were left around campus warning students to keep their windows and doors locked. Years later, one of the surviving girls told the Washington Post, I looked hard at him, but to this day, I remember nothing. Bundy had used a blunt object to savagely and quickly beat the girls unconscious. At the time of the report, Bundy hadn't yet been executed. One of his victims, still bearing the scars of his attack, was asked if she wanted to see him die. He never gave any of us a stay, she said. The biggest injustice is that Margaret and Lisa had to die so violently, so young. It hurts all the time. But, she added, being a Christian, it is very difficult to watch him die. It's thought Bundy killed a young girl of 12 shortly after the attacks at the sorority house. He was later picked up for driving a vehicle listed as stolen. He tried to run, but to no avail. The cop who arrested him had no idea who he had got in his car. Apparently, on the way to jail, Bundy told the cop, I wish you had killed me. Films and documentaries have been made about this maniac, and you can even watch interviews of him on YouTube. Most people think he was a classic sociopath. He seemed to fly into rages, had a very high view of himself, could be very charming and articulate, and seemed to have a distinct lack of empathy. In one interview, Bundy blames not himself, but pornography for leading him down a very rotten path. He said it was possession that made him want to kill, the possession of taking a life, and later of keeping the body. All kinds of psychological diagnoses have been made to describe Bundy, ranging from psychopathy, bipolar disorder, multiple personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder, but we will let you decide what drove this demon to do the things he did. Well, we don't know about you, but after that, we think we're going to replace all of the locks on our doors. So why not save money while you order them? Get the security of knowing you are getting the best deal with Honey. The Honey browser extension works silently in the background, scanning and testing every coupon code on the internet. Honey will automatically try all known coupon codes for that store. If it finds one or more codes that work, it'll apply the one that saves you the most money. Download it today and join the 9 million users who have collectively saved over $325 million. It's free, it only takes two clicks to install, and it saves you money wherever it can. Click the link in the description to add Honey to your browser for free, or go to joinhoney.com infographics.